That'll be nice as well. Oh, that'll be it's nice lovely. as well. Well, it's a bit of colour there. There is, there is. It all goes well together. So, mm. that's your uh, colourful barrow. Mm. Right, welcome to Stone Harold. Um, we have actually come on to September's edition of Green Fingertips. Uh, we apologise for July, August, as there's been some technical issues. So yeah, we're here on a sunny day at Stoughton Harold with our garden guru, Mark Smith. So Mark, what have we got for the viewers today? Well, you was asking about colour for this time of year and what's available. So I'd, I'd, we've uh, done a, a shopping basket yeah. full of uh, colour at the moment. And things that are available at the moment, things are to go together. And as you can see, there's a riot of colour, Ooh, uh, sort of for yeah. late summer, early autumn. Uh, and just a, a quick uh, run through. Uh, oh, hydrangeas right. are very popular now. Yeah. Um, this this one in particular with the dark leaf is quite unusual because most of them tend to be just a green leaf. But uh, hydrangeas are becoming very, very popular these days. Lots of new varieties coming out and, they're, uh, and you can have them. There's a vast range of colours which you can colour, colour coordinate yeah, yeah. with the um, uh, with the rest of the garden. We've got uh, dahlias, this burnt orange, absolutely Ooh. gorgeous with the dark uh, leaf. Them uh, leaves are lovely. Yeah. They are and they contrast really well with uh, the lighter green leaves yeah. of all the yeah. things that you may uh, pick. Uh, but it tends to be green leaves so it's nice to have yeah. a few dark leaf plants just to complement the, uh, yeah, the light. These are colours. really pretty too. Yeah, that's an echinacea, um, uh -huh. very popular plant. Uh, most echinaceas tend to be quite tall. That's a dwarf grown one, so it'll grow no more than a foot tall, so uh, easy to grow. Uh, there's very, very little maintenance in that. Normal echinaceas mm -hmm. you have to cut back and or train and, and keep in a, in a ring so they don't flop about, but they, uh, they stay nice and upright. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. One of my uh, favourites is this, is, which is um, scabious chilli black. Oh. Uh, great for bees and butterflies. Um, flowers and flowers and flowers right up to the sort of first frost. They're tiny little flowers. Yeah, it's a pink, like a, it's called pink oh, cushion flower, yeah. and it looks like a little pink <laughs> cushion. Uh, but I love the black colour because yeah. uh, they tend to be either pinks or blues or whites. Mm. Uh, so the black is really unusual. And again. Even though it's got green leaves, you've got the black flowers which uh, go well with the, the, the yeah. black foliage. Right. Um, a bit of a sidestep here is um, uh, cordyline. Now the reason why I say that in, in a normal flowering yeah. uh, garden, you would pick all flowering plants. This is, tends to be in a very modern architectural mm. garden, but I think that is nice as a feature in itself. Uh, evergreen, the dark um, uh, purple uh, leaves go really well and it's just a, a contrast to all the yeah. other uh, plants that you've got uh, in the garden. Uh, again, right behind here, which you're uh, hiding away, uh, hookah, another popular plant. Right. Um, this one is, is far cheaper, which is quite a new variety. It flowers as well, but most people tend to buy it just for the plummy the red foliage. Oh. And, uh, and that's evergreen as well, so you'll have that all the way through the winter. Uh, very, very small growing plant, no more than a foot tall by right. about a foot wide. Uh, great in a pot, great at the front of a border, yeah. and again, it contrasts well and goes really well with the, uh, the plants uh, so that's been do selected. Do these um, flourish, you know, in the same sort of soil? They do. There's no, um, there's nothing at all take any uh, any special kind of treatment. Mm. The only thing I will say is the majority of them like uh, the scabious and we've got French lavender here and because we've got dahlias and we've got the bulbs with the lily mm. here, um, they all like it really well drained. They don't like yeah, um, yeah. heavy uh, soils, um, you know, where it's very clay or anything like that. Plenty of sand, plenty of grit mixed mm. in while you plant it and they'll uh, flourish and uh, they'll do really well. Anything uh, like dahlias, uh, which you 
clusters are yeah. a little bit tender. They're, they're only tender if they've got uh, water around the roots. So make sure it's free draining away from the roots and you won't have any mm. uh, problems with that. Uh, exotic uh, lily, you can use as a cut flower. Yeah. They'll uh, come back year after year and get bigger and better oh, each cool. year. When I say bigger, the clump will get bigger. They physically won't get any higher, so they're nice and neat again. Yeah. Um, the only thing you have to watch out for those is lily beetle, which you, you oh, spray at the right. beginning of the okay. season. Uh, there and then we've got um, coming straight into the autumn as brand spanking new yeah. are the the mini cyclamen at the uh, at the front mm. here now they're great for put it when you, especially when you've just planted your border mm. up and you've got those gaps it's nice to just sprinkle fill the, the odds mm. fill in the, the gaps with the, the cyclamen that will give you color within yeah. those gaps while you're waiting for the plants to uh, mm. to establish and get bigger um, and again, if you want to do a w autumn and winter hanging basket or container, cyclamen yeah. are one of the best yeah. things. They'll, they'll survive down to minus five, uh, and most of the winters that we get don't really get to that sort of uh, uh, temperature now. But again, because mm. it is a bulb, plenty of drains in the compost or in the ground when you plant them, and they'll, uh, they'll do happily right the way yeah. through uh, winter. So I know we've had a lot of rain uh, during the summer. Yeah. And I thought that would be enough for my plants. No. But a bit of hot weather and they just seem to. Yeah, the dry, it dries out very, very quickly. Yeah. You, you have to be on the. Even on the. People uh, make the mistake of not watering yeah. when it's a cloudy day, but it could be quite warm. Yeah. But on a cloudy day, the ground is still drying out even, even then. Yeah. And a lot of the time, you, you could have rain, but it might not be enough and it might not get right down to the roots. It'll. And you oh, know, and it just right, reached yeah. the uh, the first inch of uh, of the soil, so you really have to keep on top right, of the water, and especially yeah. if it's newly planted plants. These you would carry on watering right the way up to um, the end of uh, November, depending oh, on the right, weather, okay. uh, just to make sure they've got plenty. Because nowadays, uh, you know, even in December, it can be quite dry. Yeah. You know, we don't get the winters and the and the cold weather like we used to. So oh. uh, it's uh, you've got to. Uh, keep watering right the way up to yeah. uh, up to them but uh, a great collection there and, yeah. the, and the thing is they're very very easy to grow you don't really need uh, any technical experience mm. of gardening it's just plant leave and forget about there will be the odd d deadheading yeah. of the flowers yeah. you can just take off the old flowers and that's that's really it but uh, pruning wise a lot of these more modern plants and I say modern plants because all of these have got um, older relatives that yeah. you, used to be taller and you'd have to prune back quite hard oh, right. and do a lot of maintenance with with these smaller varieties compact grown varieties yeah. like the hydrangea you don't have to do that heavy pruning so Are really these all right friendly. in sort of full sun? They need to be in uh, full sun. Um, a lot of the purple leaf plants uh, need the sun to keep the colour, mm. same with the hydrangea. Oh, right. The okay. more sun you give them, the more flower you're going to get. Nice. And especially things like the lavender, which uh, need it uh, yeah. in a uh, sunny position. Um, but they do all need to go in a, right. in a sunny position. If you wanted to, if you've got a slightly shaded area, this the small mini cyclamen at the front there could go in a, a in a shady spot a shady just to spot. brighten it mm. up um, but everything else needs to I suppose they position. would be partially shaded from the bigger plants they do if yeah, they're filling up gaps yeah I mean everything yeah. in sort of dapple shade where it's quite dark um, you, uh, you'd you have some of those in there and it mm. just really lifts it and it mm. makes it uh, less uh, um, you know sad looking with the with yeah. the, uh, uh, the shade oh, Okay, so. so that was really interesting, Mark. So, um, have you any other sort of tips of the month? Well, the tips for September really is, um, you know, start looking at uh, areas in the garden uh, because we'll be coming into bulb season uh, now and uh, bulbs will be available uh, at Staunton Harold uh, very, very shortly. And uh, look at areas where it's, because uh, these are spring flowering bulbs that are coming up, so uh, look in certain areas of the garden that didn't have much colour in the mm. spring and think about that and plan now and plant the bulbs uh, that's going to be coming out uh, very shortly then. Also, with the weather that we're having at the moment, mm. very, very warm, keep on the uh, keep on the watering. Yeah. Try and mulch any plants with bark, that keeps the moisture in, uh, so stops you from having to water it mm. as much. Uh, that's always a good tip. 
and again because we have got the good weather and, it, and they're still uh, around the bat at the moment look for uh, bugs you know like green fly white right. fly uh, and black fly <coughs> and spray accordingly with the insecticides that you can buy in the uh, in the shop there yeah. but uh, it's uh, it's mainly about enjoying it at the yeah. moment less yeah. uh, less work now you've done all the hard work at the beginning <laughs> yeah. of the season now it's just uh, all about enjoying it and sitting back having that pims and having that uh, <laughs> uh, that barbecue and make it looking out yeah. in your, your nice colorful garden mm, enjoying it uh, yeah. yeah and uh, and the, the great thing at this time of year because there is so much color you will find areas in the garden that you haven't got much color in so it's well worth coming and having a visit seeing what's available and uh, putting that colour in. There's always something to buy. Yeah. There is always something to buy, <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, if the viewers want to contact you, um, is there any contact numbers? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a uh, new number because now we're at uh, Staunton, Staunton Harold. Yeah, so all the information, the contact uh, information is on the uh, screen at the moment. Uh, telephone number and address and postcode, etc. Um, but you can also, we're doing a live update every week or every other uh, day, in fact, at the moment, with the amount of plants that we're getting in uh, mm. on the Facebook page. So you, in the Facebook page, just type in Staunton Harold uh, Nurseries or Garden Centre, and you will find our uh, uh, Facebook page, and you'll see all the new things that we've got in, the new plants, the new displays, and the new things that we're doing uh, currently at the moment. Okay. So. so I hope the viewers have found this useful. And uh, we'll see you next time. They're hoverflies. Hoverflies? Yeah, they're good, they are. Why are they? Because uh, they. <laughs> <laughs> why are they? Uh, hoverflies, whenever you see these hoverflies, they're looking yeah. for insects, uh, like oh. green fly. They look, everybody thinks there's wasps and they bat yeah. batter them away, yeah. but they're actually looking for green fly. That's your uh, colourful barrow. Right. Welcome to Staunton Harold, and we're here with the garden guru, Mike Smith. Oh, it's not, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's Ma not Mike, is it? No, it's Mark. <laughs> it ain't got a name back. So I hope the viewers have found this useful, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Wait for me! <laughs> <laughs> Dare it go without me? Yeah. <laughs>